Hello and welcome to another video with me, Jo from JH Leather. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a padded hound collar. So for this tutorial, you will need a strip of leather. Now mine is two and a quarter inch is wide. You will also need a three quarter inch D-ring and buckle, some padding foam and some leather. So once you've got all your pieces together, you will need to find the best end of your main strip of leather. Once you've found the best end, you can square this end with your set square. And then you can start marking for holes. So your first hole is going to be two inches in from the end. And then on my dog collar here, I am doing my holes three quarters of an inch apart. And you'll want five holes in total. And once you've marked your five holes, you want to mark an extra one inch or so from that last hole. And this will be where the tapering will start to. So once you've got that marked out, you want to set your uh, dividers so that they're going to make a three quarter inch strip in the middle uh, for our point end. And so this can take a bit of fiddling around with, but once you've got them set to the right uh, width, you can just draw your two lines up to those points that we have just marked. And then I generally um, sort of draw out to those uh, lines as well with my set square. And then once you've got that, you want to mark the overall length of your dog collar. So to do this with your tape measure, just put the uh, required measurement on the middle hole and just mark a little line with the end of the tape measure. And then just even that up with your set square. Uh, you also want to mark this um, turn area. So you want to mark two inches either side of that crew uh, little mark that we just made and then using your dividers draw your two lines between here also. Right so once we've marked our point and turn ends we want to mark the middle of the sort of fat bit of this collar and then once we've done that we're going to mark about one inch to sort of one and a quarter inches either side of that mark. This will be flat and this is what we're going to keep straight on our dog collar and we're going to taper in between these two marks. So you can now freehand draw with your scratch or your taper. So you want a nice sort of smooth curve coming from the uh, three quarter inch uh, part of your dog collar out into the widest part. Um, so it's quite a sort of short taper on this collar. Um, but we only need to draw the one. Uh, so once you're happy with that, you can then cut this out and we will actually transfer this and draw around this onto the other three uh, sides that need the taper drawn and cut out on. So once you've cut it out, um, you can there's a, that mark that uh, we had all the way across it on the flesh side, on the grain side even, we're just going to transfer to the flesh side so we know where that needs to be, where it needs to line up on the other ends of our collar and just flip it over and then draw around um, the other uh, three sides that we will need it. And then once you're happy with that, you can then cut those three sides out as well. And you can just cut the buckle end uh, just square. Uh, if you weren't going to be padding this, you, what you would want to do is to maybe add a little bit more onto that turn end, um, maybe about half an inch so you can put a nice little egg point on the end um, just to make your turn look a bit nice and fancy. Okie dokie, so once you've got your uh, collar all cut out there, you just want to put an egg point on the point end uh, of the collar. And now once you've done that, you can now edge your collar. So we want to mark um, edge number one on the uh, grain on the top side of our collar. And then I am using a hollow edge number three. Uh, just around the point end there. We don't need to edge anywhere else on the flesh side uh, because that will be covered by our padding. Uh, 
And with some of the sort of excess bits that we have from cutting out our sort of tapered areas, you just want to um, scarf down to nothing the end of this and create two wedges that can go either side of your D ring. And then once you've done that, you can now uh, stain and crease um, your collar. Right, so once we've stained and creased, we're going to mark out and punch our crew. So if we just set your dividers and draw two little um, sort of guidelines either side of that crew mark and uh, make sure that it fits the crew that you're going to be using. And so once you've finished um, marking out where your crew is going to go, you can also even up your holes. Um, and once you're happy with that, you can then punch your crew all the way through your dog collar. And so now we can number six edge around the back of that crew hole. And now we're going to sort of mark out ready for stitch marking. So we're just going to make this turn. You may need to wet the turn just to make sure the leather doesn't crack. Um, and then pop your buckle in. And as always, we're going to squeeze as, as hard as we can on that buckle turn end and getting the stitching nice and close to the buckle and marking with our thumb where that will start to. And then once you've done that, you can just even it up with your set square. Um, you also want to um, mark where you want your stitching to finish um, and mark sort of in the centre of that um, strap also. So I think mine is actually about an inch down, so just where that taper starts. And then measure about three eighths to half an inch back again from there for where your egg point um, sort of will be. And then once you've got those marked from both sides, you just want to set your dividers to your stitching width and mark along those two sides. And then using a round object, just make a little egg point on the end there. And so once you've done that, you can now grab your number seven stitch marker and stitch mark all the way around your dog collar. And remember when you're stitching around the egg point part of your stitching, just to angle the uh, stitch marker there, uh, just makes it a little bit easier. And then once you finish stitch marking, just skive the end of the buckle turn to nothing. And you can now mark out and cut your looping. And we can now start tacking our dog collar together. Now, 
what I forgot to do here and what I end up doing in a minute uh, with the shaped dog collars you need to put the d-ring on first uh, because you can't get it on once you've uh, tacked your buckle in so I will realize my mistake shortly and uh, <laughs> take the buckle out and start again uh, but basically yeah make sure you put the d-ring on first else you're gonna have to untack um, it's not the end of the world um, so just remember that one and then once you've got your loop tacked in, you can tack in your two wedges either side of that D-ring. Right, so once we're tacked in, we are now going to cut out our padding foam. So what I am using is 6mm plaster zote. Um, you can use other foams as well. This is just one that I like to use. Um, so I'm just going to cut a straight edge here on this end. And then what I'm going to do is cut uh, a strip of foam that is just over two and a quarter inches. I normally add about sort of um, a sixteenth to an eighth um, more than what my collar um, measures you know, width wise um, and then once you've done that we can then cut that strip out also and now I cut with the uh, and with the sort of shaped collars I generally this is how I do them because it's easier to cut out the width strip you need than to draw around it straight onto the foam and cut it out afterwards so once you've cut that out and you're ready you want to pop your collar on and then with a pen um, just draw around the dog collar um, so you want the pen slightly angled um, and basically just by doing that it adds enough width to the shape once you've cut it out um, that you don't need to add any extra does that make sense um, so yeah basically by drawing it um, with sort of a ballpoint pen like this because um, you can't get in right close to the dog collar and to the leather once you've drawn around it and cut it out you don't need to add anything extra to it uh, and then once you've done that and you've cut your, your you've got your shape marked out you just want to uh, cut this um, with your knife now this foam here that I'm using blunts your knife really fast uh, which is why um, I end up stropping it quite a few times uh, <laughs> just for this one bit and this happens quite a lot this foam oh, is, a, is a knife killer um, but it's very good foam. Uh, so once you've cut out your uh, your padding, uh, what we want to do is just bring the uh, collar back and we're just going to make sure it's the right length and we're just going to taper the two ends so that once they're wrapped up in our padding leather they're not going to be sticking out um, either side of our dog collar. And once you've done that you can then skive these uh, with your knife as well. And so you want to now grab your padding leather. Now I use um, a napper for mine. It's 0 0.5 to 0, sorry, it's 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 mil thick in substance. So it's nice and thin. Um, it's also known as like a clothing hide or an upholstery hide. Um, so anything sort of between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 thicknesses is good obviously if you can only get panel hide that's that's great and you can use that as well but you may need to take into account its thickness and maybe make your um, foam filler a bit uh, narrower um, just to account for the thickness of the leather and so once you've got your rough shape of your padding leather cut out you just want to glue on your uh, foam filler in the middle and then what we will do is with a pen we're going to wrap our or fold our leather over onto the foam and mark roughly where the center um, of 
the or where where the leather meets the center of the foam padding So you just want to fold your leather over your foam and just mark roughly where the middle is onto the uh, leather. And then once we've done that, we're going to cut it out and glue it on. So the glue that I use for uh, all of my gluing really is um, it's a contact adhesive and I use Bostic uh, 6092 I think it is. Um, it's used a lot in shoemaking. It's very good um, which is why I use it. And once you've um, glued all your leather down onto your foam, uh, what you want to do is just with your scissors cut the end off at an angle uh, so it's nice and straight. And so basically, um, it's like skiving. Um, you're sort of creating a nice angle there, um, but the, the yucky cut end won't really be seen. Um, so hopefully that makes sense to you all. Um, and once you've done that, you can then glue your... Uh, padding onto your dog collar. So you want to make sure you bet your padding glued onto your collar evenly and then once you've done that you are now ready for stitching. Okay, so we're going to now hand stitch our dog collar. So we're going to do double hand stitching and we're going to start as always with a back stitch and then a stitch over the edge. Uh, we're then going to double hand stitch the rest of our collar as normal, remembering to do one large stitch over that D-ring 
then a back stitch and then a stitch forwards again so there'll be three stitches over that d-ring uh, this video assumes you know how to hand stitch already um, if you don't or you are learning and you just want to be reminded or you've not made a dog collar before I will leave a link to our hand stitching tutorial uh, which you can refresh your memories on or learn from And once you get to the end of your dog collar, um, you want to just pre-all the last few holes um, just so you can more easily all through for where your loop is and stitch your looping. And then once you've done that, remember to do your stitch over the edge and then your one and a half back stitches. Uh, once you finish stitching you can then pop your loop stick in and block the loop and do your finishing touches so restaining the collar and recreasing So when you do your recreasing, you want to make sure you recrease right around that buckle there. And once you've finished doing your finishing touches, the final thing to do is to punch your holes in the point end. And there you have your finished padded hound collar. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you'll have a padded dog collar that looks like this one. If you do get stuck or you need any help, please leave a comment below or email me on info at jhleather.co.uk and I shall get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching and if you would like to support us and the channel, you can head over to patreon.com slash jhleather and you can sponsor us from as little as $1 a month. See you in the next video.